So chapter 13 is going to focus on new movements in America. And in this particular section, we are going to be going over immigrants and the urban challenges that are taking place during this time period in the 1850s. So your learning objective for today is to be able to list the reasons for the wave of immigration from Northern Europe to the United States and to describe urban development as well as problems urban areas faced during the mid-1800s. And in case you're unfamiliar with what urban means, it's just something that relates to a town or a city. So when I say urban, you should automatically picture a town or a city. So one thing that's going to happen in the mid-1800s is that you're going to have a large number of immigrants crossing the Atlantic Ocean to begin new lives in the United States. There's going to be more than 4 million that settle in the U.S. between 1840 and 1860, and most of them will be from Europe. More than 3 million of these immigrants are going to either come from Ireland or Germany, and it's going to be because of a result of either economic or political troubles in their native countries. Most immigrants who are coming from the British Isles during this period are going to be Irish. And the reason many Irish are immigrating to the United States is due to what is known as the Irish Potato Famine. What happens in Ireland is that you have a fungus-like organism that is going to spread across this region, causing potatoes to rot. And many farmers in Ireland depend heavily on the potato as a food source. The result of this event is going to have a catastrophic impact on Ireland and its population. Before it all ends, the potato famine is going to result in the death of roughly 1 million Irish from either starvation or disease. Now most Irish immigrants who are migrating to the U.S. are poor and are going to settle in cities in northeastern states such as Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, in Pennsylvania. Many Irish are going to work unskilled jobs in the cities or building canals and women are, are usually going to work as domestic servants for wealthy families. Working conditions are going to be difficult, but even though this is the case, many of the immigrants are going to enjoy a new feeling of equality. So now that we've covered Irish immigration, let's take a look at German immigration to the United States. In 1848, Germans had staged a revolution and as a result, some had to flee their country in order to escape political persecution. Even though some Germans were immigrating due to political persecution, most were immigrating for economic reasons, and since the United States seemed to offer a less controlling government that gave people a greater economic opportunities, it became the chosen destination for many. Now there are a few differences between Irish immigrants and German immigrants you should know about. For one, German immigrants were more likely than the Irish to become farmers and live in rural areas. The other difference is that many German immigrants actually arrived in the U.S. with some money to their name. Even though this was the case, German immigrants were still often forced to take low-paying jobs such as tailors, bricklayers, and servants. So we have a lot of immigration during this time period happening in the United States. This is going to eventually lead to an anti-immigration movements within the country. Americans who oppose immigration during this period are called nativists. And one of the main reasons for this is due to the fear of native-born Americans losing their jobs. This is because many immigrants were willing to work the same jobs as native-born Americans, but at a cheaper price. So, I, we see that happening in our country even to this day, right? Where if we have immigrants that are coming over, there is a fear still among Americans that they're taking their jobs. So, as a result, a new party is going to form by na nativists, and it's going to be called the Know Nothing Party. Much of the Know Nothing Party's political goals focus on making it difficult for foreigners to become citizens or hold office. Even though the party had some success in getting elected in the 1850s, it's eventually going to fall apart due to disagreements over the issue of slavery. 
Now we've already talked about the Industrial Revolution in class, but it's important to recall the effects this had on urban areas. Remember that the Industrial Revolution led to the creation of many jobs in American cities. This is important because this is what is going to draw many immigrants to the United States. It's also important because paired with the transportation revolution, it's going to help cities rapidly grow in the mid-1800s and lead to a new middle class. Even though new jobs are created and cities are rapidly developing, we still have some problems. For example, many city dwellers, especially immigrants, could only afford to live in tenements. These are poorly designed apartment buildings that house a large number of people and were often dirty, overcrowded, and unsafe. Public services in these areas are also poor. Many of the cities do not have clean water or public health regulations and as a result, as a result disease is easily spread and epidemics are common. Think of your city or your town didn't have these regulations in place. Think of how it would impact your life. So now at the beginning of this lesson, you had a learning objective to be able to list the reasons for the wave of immigration from Northern Europe to the United States and to describe urban development and the problems these areas face during this time. What I would like you to do is reflect on this lecture and to go back if you need to and see if you met this objective. And to also to refer to Google Classroom to answer any follow-up questions I may have. Thanks and have a great day.